Nier Automata, Horizon Zero Dawn, two games on the PlayStation 4 that have become quite relevant lately, and if you're strapped for time, cash, or both, then a good question would be, which one of these games and their leading ladies should I pick up? Today I'm going to tell you all about both of these games, and by the end of this video, you will know which one is for you. Here's the thing, Horizon and Nier, while quite different at their core, share some similarities. Two female leads who do not fuck around in an open world and fun fluid gameplay that is action oriented with RPG elements, but which one will you ultimately choose? Let's start with my personal pick. In a world where robots have taken over Earth and humanity has been forced to retreat to the moon, humanity has attempted to create an army of unfeeling androids, enter the lovely 2B. Now, if you're a progressive like I am, you will already notice the problematic design of 2B's wardrobe. The option to remove her skirt via self-destruct and reveal her full buttocks is even included. Now, this by no means denies Nier Automata power of character, story, or even agency. Nier has always found a rather bizarre way to tell its stories in designing their female leads. And when Yoko Taro gets amazing writers and designers, amazing things tend to happen. 2B as a character is tough, focused, empathetic, and driven. In the demo, she finds herself in a position where her squadmate 9S is wounded mortally. She is immediately rushing to his side and is quite physically shocked seeing her squadmate like this. She won't just up and leave him, and when he tries to convince her to, and to deny her emotions, she simply tells him to shut up over and over again. It's only when the situation becomes truly helpless that the two of them decide to self-destruct and take their overwhelming enemies with them in a twist that was not seen coming by anyone, not even me. And I'm a fan of this game series. Now, to avoid further spoilers, let's talk about gameplay. You're in an open world, but the game wants you to keep focused, so no fast travel until the story ends. Sorry guys. In Nier Automata, you have four categories of weapons. Swords, big swords, spears, and combat fists. Variations of damage, speed, maybe you're just like plowing your enemies with big bat swords. We don't judge here. You're also going to have a pod traveling with you that is used to fire bullets to deal extra damage per second and unleash skills like lasers, shields, giant hammers, giant spears coming out of the ground. You can also find plug-in chips in the game. These chips do different things depending on the chip. Some allow you extra HUD data, increase your attack, defense, some even offer utility like taunt increasing your attack by 180%. Platinum Games and Yoko Taro did not fuck around this time, as they have brought the best action of Bayonetta and the lovably sad aesthetica of Nier, to make something that I truly think that we will all love when we play it. One thing you should know about Nier games is they never, ever end on a happy note. The first ending is always sad enough, but as you unlock more endings, the more sad and tragic they tend to become. If you're getting this game and you expected something happy, well, maybe you should try Horizon, I'm not going to lie. With this game, you are getting a fast-paced, hyper-deathly action game, and you should prepare to cry. Now for Horizon. Horizon features a more progressive-looking female lead named Aloy. In the beginning, she's cast out from her tribe and lives on her own. Surviving on her own or taking jobs from other tribes in a post-apocalyptic world where robotic dinosaurs have otherwise become the dominant species on the planet and humans live in tribes on the side. Since Aloy was kicked out of the tribe, she's since accepted her place on the outside of what is left in society and has become damn good at surviving and hunting. Horizon's story is a bit more straightforward than Nier Automata's, and simultaneously more relevant to our society. A woman is ostracized and moves on. However, the group that ostracized her has a trial, and if she passes, she can ask for whatever she wants. She wants to know why she was never given a place in society and whom her parents actually were. I'm not going to spoil what happens beyond that, but she's a woman who's constantly proving herself and just wants to be accepted. And if that isn't beautiful, I honestly do not know what is. Horizon combines the best of Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, and Middle-Earth's Shadow of Mordor in one good package of beautiful landscape goodness. You will climb and parkour like Assassin's Creed and hunt huge beasts akin to Far Cry, and each of these beasts have different weaknesses that can be exploited or strengths that have to be acknowledged. The game is by no means Dark Souls, but it can be a little difficult at times. Horizon's world is massive and dense, you will find things that you need, you will find things that sometimes you can sell, and with the money get healing gear, weapons, or even outfits for Aloy's stats and look. The open world has random generation akin to Skyrim, since there are robot dinosaurs and NPCs like who wish to kill you. As for humans, sometimes they have a quest, or even random traders sometimes catch your eye. Maybe you'll find a beacon or item that leads to some sort of quest, who can say? 
The game features a crafting system that is somehow reminiscent of popular survival games on Steam, yet somehow manages to be not even half as overbearing. You will craft items quickly and on the go, and things are simple to find like Far Cry 3 and Assassin's Creed, but objects that you find lead to a larger and more interesting array of killing tools such as bow and arrows, slingshots that fire bombs, shotguns, and traps. You will also get three skill trees, stealth, guns blazing, HP, and item user. You can use skills to dodge, sneak, capture animals as mounts, heal, or even kill your enemies faster. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of Shadow of Mordor, how these three styles of gameplay, stealth, combat, and utility just blend together into one fluid and cinematic action game. Each enemy in Horizon Zero Dawn is almost alive, so there seems to be very specific reasons as to why they do what they do, and some types of arrows will work better than others. Some enemies need their armor torn off, and others need an electric shock, while some will just need to have their armor corroded. One thing I have to say about Horizon Zero Dawn is its NPCs remind me of The Witcher 3, however the NPCs don't come off as sympathetic and interesting like the NPCs of The Witcher 3 do. Everyone seems so serious or ready to hunt the next monster, and you can't really gauge much about their personal lives or what kind of people they are with that information. Between the two games of East and West, you have two open world action games with two strong female leads who take no prisoners and do what they feel is right. On one hand, you have quick, fluid JRPG action that will make you nostalgic, sympathetic, and melancholy by the end. On the other hand, you have slow but fluid Western RPG action that will surely make a statement about our society and will have characters that will connect with you. A small but fairly wide open world, or a dense and populated open world, which will you choose? If you liked Shadow of Mordor more than DMC, enjoy Skyrim-esque open worlds, and prefer your women to have a more conservative and realistic look, I would suggest Horizon. If you prefer DMC or Bayonetta to Shadow of Mordor and Skyrim, and generally like JRPGs and sexy women in gaming, I suggest Nier Automata. Anyway, that's all for today. See you next week.